everybody. Welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm Diane Gibbs. I'm your host, and we're here every week, um, every Wednesday at 11.30 Pacific Time, um, 2.30 Eastern Time. We give an hour to recharge our design battery. So um, there's all, you can always chat over here to the whatever. I don't know if it's the left. It's our right, I guess. It's physically my left, but um, it's all backwards. But anyway, you can type over there. We'll put links in. We're going to share some images and uh, talk about a whole bunch of stuff. But today I am joined with Donna Ferruja. She is the executive director of the Creative Group. And if you haven't, if you've picked up a how regularly, you they write in there all the time, and they have tons of great information. And TCG is a large specialized staffing firm that places creative design marketing web professionals on freelance and full-time full jobs with clients in all industries throughout North America. And they have 35 branches. And Donna has been in marketing for over 30 years, field operations, and executive management experience. Um, prior to joining the creative group, Robert Half and the creative group, 13 years ago, she was global services business development manager for 3M in St. Paul, um, responsible for executive level planning, business development. She's done so much. It's amazing. And before that, she worked for Kodak. She's done a lot of stuff with imaging um, companies. So it's really interesting. And she was doing stuff with um, their printing, publishing markets, doing, uh, she was an applications engineer. She's done a ton. Out of, your first job out of college was with Kodak, right? Is that right, Donna? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she was a systems anal right. analyst for corporate product handling in Rochester. So she's gone all over. She's actually super warm today in um, sunny Los Angeles. So she is ex much warmer than me in way southern Alabama. We're both in LA is what we call it, lower Alabama. You're just in Los Angeles, a different LA. Um, but anyway, so she's going to, we are going to answer, get her to answer a ton of questions. And if you're anywhere around, they actually, the creative group, if they don't, there's not a location here where I live, but they can, if I was looking for a job, I could still go and put my application there and they could place me in in lots of other places. So just because you're not, um, you don't have a the creative group location in your area, it doesn't mean that you can't still use them to get jobs and um, freelance or full time. So that was something I didn't really realize, which was great. I can, um, I can get placed and go somewhere or I can actually do work from my house because some people don't care if I'm where I am located, correct? Correct. All right. All right, Donna. Give us um, um, what do you, what do you like best about dealing with creatives? And um, because you have to, you have to get to know them to be able to do your job. So, what's the best part of just working at the creative group and dealing with creatives? Oh, Diane, and hello, by the way. Hello, everyone. Um, working with creative people is, uh, is is so much fun. As Diane said, you know, I started my career more on the technology side, a systems analyst trained in logistics, computer science, working uh, with, uh, you know, bit large computer systems. Uh, then I got into marketing and, and, you know, spent many years there. Now I'm on the creative really you know the the opposite side if you, if you will almost the complementary side of technology now but what i love about working with creative people is um you know the 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 thinking design thinking i i never really realized until the past you know four years how much problem solving uh, you know, thinking goes on for a, in a design process. So I love not only the beautiful work as the result of the product, but all of the process and problem solving that happens before, uh, before a design. And, and for me, it just a, it's a beautiful appreciation of, of a design that I hadn't had um, before. So I have so much respect for design thinkers 
um, and and just the end product, obviously, I, I love every day. I, I get to look at the most beautiful things every day. So that's it's a lot of fun. Well, cool. Um, we're going to jump into the questions. And if anybody has questions as well, feel free to type them in the chat or um, at the end, if we have time, maybe we can bring you on camera. If I've seen you before, I can look to see if you are you know, ready to go. We'll try that. Um, do you recommend, so, and again, you know, everybody has portfolios. I've been in the industry for over 20 years, and then there's, you know, people who are just graduating. So really, Design Recharge is really for everybody, but um, we're going to kind of focus, we'll have certain questions that are more for new graduates or people that are graduating, and then other she might answer a different way because it's for somebody a little bit more established. So this question is kind of for students, the first part. Um, do you recommend portfolio reviews for students? And then would you recommend them for recent grads or even for professionals? Yes, I, I strongly recommend portfolio reviews, and there are many, many reasons uh, why I why I do. Um, first of all, it's a if if anything, it's incredible practice for the real interview. And if you're looking for work, um, you know you you it's important that you are prepared for that interview. And the portfolio review is a wonderful way to get you know, feedback on your work, really constructive feedback on your work. Um, not only, you know, get to talk about your work with people who have probably been working for a lot longer than you have, but, um, you know, they, 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 they could give you feedback on how you package that portfolio as well, package your work. And, you know, there's, there's a couple sides of your portfolio, and I think we'll talk about it uh, throughout the next hour, but you have the, you know, the form and the function of your portfolio. So you're, you, you have almost the, you know, the inside and the outside, if you will. So you get to talk a lot about the inside, your work, the samples, but you also get to talk about and practice how you present your work how you talk about your work, how you, your work is organized, and, and you know, how you really sell those ideas. So a portfolio review isn't just about, you know, hey, here's my portfolio, is it nice? It's all of the other important parts about job hunting, about marketing yourself, branding yourself, getting feedback, practicing, um, you know, and, and, and not only all of that stuff goes on at a portfolio review, but it's a good chance for you to see other people's work, almost your competition out there. How do you benchmark yourself against other great designers? Um, you know, how do they package their work? You get inspired by other people that way. So, so that's the second thing. And the third thing, which I, is a really important part about looking for work and just about you know the the labor market in general is networking you get to network with peers you get to network with uh, hiring managers advisors mentors firms like mine that may be good resources for you so do i recommend portfolio reviews i highly highly recommend everyone participates in a portfolio review you know as often as you can whether you're a student whether you're getting ready to graduate whether you're a recent grad whether you're a you know a professional in the labor market i i think they're it's really really good uh practice and and great a great event overall and i really have to thank all of the professional organizations out there that, that organize these things because there are a lot of work behind the scenes too. So, you know, pulling the right agencies together, the right corporate creative directors together, um, you know, it's a lot of work. So people like um, organizations like the Art Institutes, um, HOW, uh, we, do, we do portfolio reviews at RISD, at the HOW Design Conferences, at the Art Institutes, everywhere in all these markets, these people do you know, a lot of work behind the scenes pulling this together. They're, they're really wonderful. 
it is a ton of work. And I know some, I had a guest on from Arizona, um, and they actually, their firm, a three-person firm, they do a portfolio review for the, for the neighboring colleges and stuff and universities. And I even think that it's something that, you know, a couple of design firms could do as well, but it does take a lot of work. AIGA does design uh, portfolio reviews. So I definitely, I'm with you on I, how important it is. And I think the networking, I agree, it's, it's a factor we don't think about it. But it's everything. It's how you're dressed, how you present yourself. And we're definitely going to get into that a little bit more. Um, if I was going to go to a portfolio review and I was, um, you know, we've kind of broken it down to three people. So a student, a recent grad, and then a professional. What kind of things would I put in and how would I, how would it be different for somebody who was, you know, maybe going to graduate in a year as opposed to six weeks or a person that graduated a year ago or a professional who's been working for 15 years? What would they do differently or what would they put in their book? Well, you know, it's, you know, keep in mind who your audience is. So no matter, no matter who you are, you know, you're a student, you're a grad, you're getting ready to graduate, or you're a, uh, you know, a new student, a freshman, sophomore, uh, maybe you're, you know, a, a person who's in the workforce for a while, you're looking for work. Just remember, who is your hiring manager? Because, you know, what you put in your portfolio is different depending on who you're presenting it to, right? And I understand someone may have a lot more work, you know, a lot more work to 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 show, whereas a, a student new in design may not. So, um, you know, keep in mind who your audience is, what 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 you're, you know, when you're organizing your portfolio, and a, and a successful you know job search, um, you know, whether it's a, for freelance work or or full time, it does require you these days to have a hard copy like a book um, or uh, you know a portfolio case of, of samples and an online portfolio because that web presence can really help you uh, you know get your foot in the door make an introduction to a company you want to work for but you know like I said many many hiring managers still want you to come to that interview with a well crafted hard physical, portfolio. So whatever you put in it, whether it's your projects and in, in, in you know your work in process, um, you know, or whether it's some great campaigns that have won awards, it should paint a crystal clear and truthful, accurate picture of your skills, your expertise, and what you can bring to that hiring manager, because these hiring managers today, they're looking for people who can make an immediate impact either on the project they need you to work on or on their company's you know, revenue top line and bottom line. So they're looking for, for people who can help them immediately. It's important, um, no matter what you put in that book, that you highlight your abilities, like I was saying earlier, to think strategically. How show your thinking process, show your 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 process um, that is behind the project, behind the design, and how you've come to the end result, how you've delivered positive results as a result of your work. So whatever it is, it's important that. Um, you're honest, you're truthful, you put your best work in there, you know your audience, and you show the process behind your design um, so that we can see how you, how you think, how um, you, know, you get to the results. And this is true for professionals at any stage of uh, their career. And, and the, online, the online portfolio, like I was saying, it's just indispensable today. Because um, if you can't physically be there in front of a hiring manager, you can always share a link via email to your work. So, um, you know, those, those two pieces are important for you to remember. So, with the showing the process behind the design, I think this is really critical. And I think some people might not know how 
and what exactly are you talking about like showing different ideations showing sketches showing different stages of the design um, or are you talking about something else No, that's what I mean. How you how you approach the design, even you know what I I like to for every one of your pieces of work, I like you to have um, you know a a narrative somewhere that says here's the goal of this project. Here was the challenge. Here you know was our objective. Um, you know, here's my role in this project. Here, here's how I went about you know, helping the team solve the problem, achieve the goals. You know, here's the process we went through. Here's the ideations, the iterations, the sketches behind this. Here's what we've thrown out. Here's the messy, complicated process behind the scenes. And you know, here's the beautiful end result. Here's the simple, clean end result and and if at all possible when at all possible along with that part of your presentation the results quantify it wherever possible quantify it here's you know how successful this campaign was in terms of increasing sales or you know increasing visitors to a site um, you know, quantify that. So yeah, the process behind it, I know it gets messy. A lot of times you don't want to show that, but show how you your you or the team you were on, you know, came to the end result is really important way of of getting uh, you know getting to know you as a designer. And I think you can clean up. Like if your sketches are really kind of messy, you can scan them in and clean them up. I mean, not, but if there's a ton of extra stuff around there, you can clean them up so that you can print them out in a way that was a little bit more organized if maybe you don't want to show your sketchbook or something. Do you think that that's okay, or do you think they should just show the craziness? It, it, it really depends. I mean, you, you know best. If there's a, a method to your madness and you could talk clearly about it, then, you know, you might enjoy one or two pieces that really show the, you know, the, 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 the messiness. But yeah, I, I would err on the side of the cleaner process. There, sorry, I had it on mute for when I coughed. Um, how, I'm sorry, um, how many, can you hear me now? Um, okay, how many pieces, yes. how many pieces would you suggest having in, and then how many, um, how many would you show that full process for? Or are you talking about every piece show full process? No, I, Okay, so so you need to show how you get to the end result, right? And you could talk through that. Sometimes it's as simple as talking through the you know the 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 process, not showing the messy ideations behind. If you do have a good uh, campaign where you can show some of the process behind it's a clean process not too messy one or two pieces that's it that's all even one piece is enough for the process but it's important to talk about the process on every piece succinctly you know this is something you want to practice in the portfolio reviews or practice with some of your peers or um, you know some some mentors it's uh, a, I, I like you to think of um, one thing it's 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 a little short little acronym I, I say you you growl your your passion about every piece and when I say growl I want you to you think of G R R grr like you're getting angry you're getting passionate about your work and on every piece you want to say here's the goal of this piece here's my role in this piece of work and here are the results of this piece 
I, I think one of the, um, uh, the pieces of feedback we get from hiring managers is that the presentation of the work neglects the business aspects of the work, right? So the work is beautiful. Most designers that we see have absolutely gorgeous work. It's the process and the presentation behind the work that's missing. So the goal of the project, you know, the challenges you had to overcome, the your role in the project, if you were the creative director, the art director, you're the production person, the graphic designer, and then the results of this project in terms of, um, you know, in, in, in business terms, in, in, in terms of how it helped the company achieve their goals. Definitely. I think that's really critical. And in design education, I think sometimes it's um, missing. So um, I'm, I'm taking tons of notes. So I will add these to my classes for sure. Um, but I do think that the results as designers, sometimes I think we're like, oh, thank goodness I'm done with that project. I don't have to. I don't have to think about it anymore. But I've had uh, a client that I've been working with for over ten years, and we continually set the standard um, where people always are copying us later, which is great. I have no problem with that. I know some people don't like that, but I'm like, I'd rather set the trends than um, have to keep following. And <clears throat> where we are, it's. It's so important to be able to talk about those roles to the other clients. How successful what I've done and what they've let me do because they, you know, let me kind of have my own. They let me be creative, and I think it's really important to be able to share that and then show how the results were. And I think when you're first in in school, you might not get that whole business sense, but I think in time it comes. But it's also having a mentor. I think is a really good. Um, that someone in business of how in practice with somebody that's not a designer that's outside that has more of a business sense because then they could help you maybe um, word things so that it would be like well I don't care about this let tell me something that would help me you know as a business person so I think that's a great and I think it's a good idea maybe it's a friend of the family or somebody you don't know real well you could just go and you know practice I think what like what you were saying is is really important so when they're going and they have a lot of people carry something and I know you have a we're, I'm going to show this picture um, what should I mean what should I carry and I know physically portfolio case or should we have pieces you know on actual boards so that showing craftsmanship or do I have a book that has all my work in it or you know am I on an iPad or a uh, you know, some other device. What's what are your suggestions? And I'm going to pull this picture up. This is a physical case that y'all are sharing. So just so everybody knows, if you're new to Spreecast, um, this is how it works. So an uh, image comes up on the screen. I can't move it for you. You have to actually move it yourself. You can um, roll your mouse over it, and then you can click and drag it. You can put it over my face if you don't want to see me anymore. Uh, or you can put it over the chat so that you can see the chat a little bit and then you can see Donna talking. So you want to give us a little um, background behind this one or behind what you think about portfolio cases and digital portfolios coming into a thing like that? Yeah, so I think that, um, you know, the beauty of this design is you just you just don't expect to see an acrylic case come onto your desk. You're you're expecting to see, you know, a black clay case with plastic sleeves, and not there that there's anything wrong with that. But this particular case that you see on the screen has that wow factor that uh, you know someone will remember, and uh, that is something to think about when you're putting together your portfolio portfolio um, you know the, the the customizing the design gives you just one more opportunity to show off your creativity your um, you know your your 
creative spark, if you will, um, and and make a lasting impression, because um, that's what we do, right? That's what we do in design. We want you know that impression to last a lot longer than you know when someone just takes a brief look at your design. We want that impression to last for a long time. So what I love about this um, this acrylic box is this this graphic designer, you know, she handcrafted this case. It's translucent, so it, it's clean, it's simple, it keeps the the, the focus on uh, you know the work inside, um, and then it shows off some craftsmanship, which you know maybe you don't always have that chance to physically show. Your craftsmanship. So, so this is just a great conversation, Peter um, starter. It's a great conversation piece. I love it. It flips open, um, you know. And 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 the other thing that I like about this is she mounts um, some samples inside a, on a board um, that she can change and customize for every interview she goes on. So it's very easy to um, you know, customize that for the next presentation. Um, I think it's very memorable. Um, you don't have to create something from scratch uh, to make your, your case you know, personal. Um, you can customize a ready-made portfolio case. Uh, you can just mount a piece of, uh, you know, your a, a business card or something like that on the front of a of a box in a clever way. Um, you can turn something non-traditional like a like a decorative box or, or something vintage into a receptacle like this for your samples. But just make sure that the overall design complements your personal brand. Um, you don't want it to distract too much from the work inside or come across as gimmicky or anything like that. But the, the physical portfolio is another opportunity for you to leave a lasting impression on, on that person. And I really love this acrylic box for that reason because um, it's clean, it's simple, it's easy to customize, um, but it's memorable. Yeah, it's really, I remember being on the other side of the table when I was um, interviewing and then I remember being an interviewee, and I, when I was interviewing um, for some one of my jobs, I um, I took an old vintage um, suitcase, piece of luggage, and it was good because you could really, I could clean up the inside, I could do something with fabric on the inside, and then I could put my pieces, my boards all fit. And I also didn't use blackboards; I used all um, craft paper, craft port board. Um, it was still thick board, strong, but. It was just a different color, so it was another way to kind of stand out. And I know I got callbacks, and people talked about me being the suitcase girl, and because I, you see, and then being on the other side of the table, I was as we were interviewing, it was like, what are they going to do to stand out? Oh, the kid that was really, you know, cocky, or the kid that came in with the the box, or we, you know, it's like those are things that stand out, and you don't want to stand out in a bad way, you know. So I think the the cool acrylic box. That would be like a thing. I, if I was hiring, I would write that on her resume so that I would remember who she was. Because again, those things do really help you to stand out. And I mean, I think it's everything. It's the whole piece. But if you're doing something really good and, and original, I think, is can be um, really powerful, I guess. Because again, you want to be seen as an original. What about digital? So say I have something digital in my port. And this, how would I show that? Well, again, we were talking about the physical book. Your website is important, and um, you know I think we even ha might have a screenshot here of a of a clean um, website. If you want to bring up that that other illustrator's website. Um, if you have something, you know, digital in it, and uh, you know it's on your iPad and your laptop, um, practice presenting it just like you practice presenting your physical portfolio. Practice presenting your digital portfolio. I love this, you know, the 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 landing page 
of this designer because it's so clean and um, you know it shows her illustration skills it really you get a feel for her work her brand um, and then when you enter her site it's very simple you know click here type of a thing when you enter the site it's just as clean on the you know on the inside as it is on the landing page um, you know there's no clicking after clicking after clicking to find things. There's just thumbnails across um, the, the top that shows, you know, images. Um, for, so it's that, that, that are eye catching. So it's easy for an art director to, to, to see the simple categories. Do I want illustration? I'll just look at this illustration. Do I want, you know, paintings? I'll just click on these paintings. Do I want, you know, drawings? I'll, I'll click on the drawings. So it's, it's separated nicely, but it's um, easy the, on the eye. So just like you're organizing your, uh, your, you know, your hard copy portfolio, you want to organize your digital portfolio simply that way and when you're presenting it whether it's the iPad or the laptop or you're you know on a desktop you've pulled your your website up on the clients you know desktop whatever it is practice practice presenting it I've seen students uh, you know not have refined skills in this area and I've had someone I've had many people actually you know give me their iPad and say you know here you know you you do it well well that's good I mean you know I, I certainly know how you know to flip through the iPad but I think it's important that you learn how to present your your digital portfolio the same way that you practice choreographing the presentation of your physical portfolio because I do want to tell you all it's you know there, there are two sides to to being a designer and presenting your portfolio it's you know it, it's it's the hard skills and the soft skills it's the form and the function it's the creative and the technical it's the you know it's the it's the substance and the presentation it's what you say and how you say it so you know all that goes together so just it's so important to have beautiful samples selected and have a beautifully designed portfolio but how you present your work leaves just as lasting a, an impression as the work itself. So practice, practice, you know, the physical piece, practice the online piece, and um, you cannot practice too much. So again, back to those portfolio reviews. It's a, that's, you know, that's just one of the best ways to practice presenting your digital and your hard copy. And another thing I really like about this piece is that you have that feel on the first page and the it kind of has a little character and we get that at the top and the red is coming through so it's kind of the it's her brand she's branding herself with this kind of sketchy but then she shows the rest of the page shows two different um, so we have a total of three different styles of illustration which I think it's great because then one illustrator can serve all your needs instead of trying to oh well you can only do this one thing so for an illustrator I think this is really a really successful piece things are big enough they're easy to click it's not overwhelming with color so that I can really focus on the illustration too because I think sometimes it can get a little muddy um, on some sites so keep it simple so that we can focus on your work I guess yeah and and it's even really easy to get in touch with her right so click on the info tab um, you can see her experience her email address her phone number you don't have to search around for that contact information either um, and the other thing about this uh, this illustrator Amy uh, she she uploads new work once a month so you do want to keep your website your online portfolio fresh uh, you don't have to change it every day, but you know, once a month would be, um, I think, good guidance for the average designer. Cool. Um, so I know that uh, Christian had a question, um, and we're going to get to it, but we're, we can ask it now, hopefully. So 
for those of us, uh, she says that aren't HTML, CSS inclined, what are your thoughts on Behance or maybe a templated WordPress portfolio? And actually, I think the one that was just up was uh, WordPress. I would have, that's what I would guess that it was. What do you think about things like that? Oh, I think they're fantastic tools. I think those are, that's it. There are a lot of tools out there for you to use. Templates are a good way to get started the WordPress. I love the Behance format. Um, there are other, you know, free uh, sites out there that allow you to create a portfolio, manage your portfolio, communicate with others about your portfolio. You have to get followers that way. When I follow designers, I get updates right into my email that tells me they updated their work. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's really, these are really good tools. Um, and I like them. I know the creative group has a portfolio site as well. You can create a portfolio on our site. We, we, we have samples and we're actually in the process of building a, a, a more robust digital portfolio site for people like you so that you have these tools because I do think they're there for you to use. Why not use them? Use the templates if, if, if they represent your, your style. Um, and then you could work on customizing your own. Cool. Good, though. Thanks for that question. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Christian. Um, what do you think, um, let's see, well, about that personal brand, and we talked about it with the website, so when you're going, and we talked about it a little bit with the girl with the box, but what do you think, um, how would you recommend someone marketing themselves at an interview as opposed to maybe a portfolio review, or is it really just the same thing? Yeah, so you go into an interview, you're talking usually to a hiring manager, and they're looking for you to talk about your work, the thought process behind it, and to do this really well, you need to practice. Portfolio reviews are a great way to practice, but you can do this yourself. You know, take the time to refresh your memory on each piece in your book, each piece on your site. Pull out old creative briefs if you have them, right? Look, remind yourself why you chose that font. Why did you select that color? You know, maybe it was Pantone's color of the year. Maybe this was part of the fall palette for that year. You know, these are the details of each project that help you, you know, passionately tell the story about your work. And, and it's... You know, it's important that you tell a story, but you tell it succinctly. You study your lines so that you can talk comfortably about each sample. Um, you know, and again, do you remember those goals? What was the goal of this project? What were the challenges you've overcome? You know, do it quickly. Um, you know, managers uh, sometimes, believe it or not, we send people out on a lot of interviews where someone thinks they might have 40 minutes you know, 50 minutes for an interview, and it ends up being seven minutes or 10 minutes in the lobby. And this creative director is so busy, you're lucky to have gotten five, 10 minutes in the lobby. You want to be prepared with your best three to five pieces for that interview that you can say, here was the goal of this project, here was my role in this project, here's the results of this project, you know, here were the challenges of this project. Next piece, boom, 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 a little bit of your thought process, your organizational skills, your preparation for a short meeting, all coming through. You don't have to spend this, you know, seven minutes remembering what this piece was about if you practice that. What you do is you're, you're, you've selected three to five great samples, and you can now give a business presentation succinctly, quickly, effectively, passionately about each piece. So the way you're prepared, the way you've presented is leaving in it as much an impression on this person as what the work was. That's so these two pieces go hand and I think when you're when you're marketing yourself in the interview, 
select pieces that are most relevant to that hiring manager. We all know, every one of us on this broadcast right now knows that the it's all about an experience these days, right? So now you are giving this hiring manager an experience that you want them never to forget. Your work is beautiful. You've selected beautiful samples. You're, you have design skills and your presentation skills are out of this world. You've respected their time. You understand business. Boom. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're ready for the interview. I think that's really important is that when you can present, then they can, if they hire you, then they're going to trust you to present to their clients or to present to other people in their company. And it's a selling, you know, you're able to sell them or you're able to, to make them look better. And I think not just visually, but it's also verbally and professionally. So I think that's really, I think understanding business is really important. Um, any tips for you think, because I think something that might be a little bit harder for people who haven't, who aren't super old or, you know, haven't had as much experience. Do you have any tips, like, for somebody who's 20 and they haven't, you know, they just had some summer jobs or something like that? Do you have any tips for them to understand, to ask people or who they should ask about business things or what they should read or blogs they should follow or so that they get more into it? Well, employers are, are, are looking for results-driven people. They're looking for candidates, like I said earlier, you know, that can have an immediate impact on either the projects, you know, goals, or the, the company's bottom line, right? So it is important, especially as a student, you're already in this mode, you do your homework on that company, and you see what goals they are trying to achieve. <clears throat> and, um, you know, and, and before meeting with the hiring manager, uh, you know, you try and select samples, maybe your work that best addresses, you know, what, what they need. Maybe it's email marketing, maybe it's landing pages, maybe it's branding, whatever, you know, it is. You select pieces that you think can help that company. Um, reach their goals, uh, you know, overcome their challenges, and, um, you know, you can make an, uh, an impact, a significant impact. You have to do your homework. Um, you know, I think, uh, I, I, I think you need to do your homework, you need to be succinct, prepared, paint, uh, you know, a clear picture of the value as a designer you bring uh, to the organization, um, you know, and 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 just make sure you're, you know, you're prepared with this goal, role, result type of a presentation for every piece. Because if you can't, you know, talk about results, and maybe you're a student that you you haven't executed a live campaign, but what do you think the results of this campaign should be? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you think this piece will, you know, will will drive, uh, you know, traffic to a website, uh, increase sales because of because of the design, because of the packaging? Like, you know, at least say in your, you know, in your train with your trained eye, with your trained skills, you believe that this would be the results of the project. It would increase this and drive this kind of traffic and so on. But speak in business terms whenever possible. You're getting ready for that interview. Short, engaging sound bites that, you know, tell the story of how each piece of your work solved a business problem. Great. So I know that every, we do our homework for each company. And then how do we, um, say if somebody does more web stuff, you obviously would put more web stuff in, but maybe you would keep some of your print stuff in, um, or you would, you know, add more email marketing, even though they might not do that yet, or they don't do as much, but it's just something else that you can maybe offer that they maybe aren't doing, but 
maybe they will if they have you on their team. How would you know what order to put them in? Um, and how do you cater your book? You know, you have the same kind of stuff, and you can put some things in and pull some things out, but how would you, how do you cater it to each individual? You do your homework, but what should be first? What should be in the middle? What should be last? Is it always ending with the best piece, or, or what? Well, hiring managers have told us, first of all, you know, that, um, you know, they, they like to start on a high note and end on a high note. You know, so when you're organizing your samples and your pieces, it's really important what order you put them in. It's very, very important. Make sure your best piece, your absolute best piece, piece is first. It's a little, not a trick, I don't want to say a trick, but it is a little experiment I do, um, you know, with, with designers that are presenting their portfolio. Before they open it up, I say, take me to your best piece. Because you shouldn't be scrambling and flipping to find it. It should be first. Now, also, executives have told us they, they like to view an average of seven samples before they determine whether someone's qualified. So on average, you're going to have between, you know, seven and ten samples in your book. Okay. So, or, you know, on the website, you can have many more. But in a physical book, you know, it's, it's about seven to ten. So your best piece is first. Your second best piece is usually last. Why? Because you want to end on a high note as well. You start on a high note, you end with a, with a great impression, it, it just leaves people wanting more. And then all those samples in the middle also better be outstanding. You don't want to just put, you know, mediocre work in there to fill up a book. Only put great pieces of work in your book. Your best piece first, your second best piece last, and then start with your third, fourth, fifth after, you know, page one. Um, so you start and end on a high note. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. Typically, um, three or more people at a company will evaluate your portfolio, right? So it's not just that one person. So you do want it to be easy to understand and, you know, flip through and follow um, online. You know, it's, it's it, e the organization of it, the makeup, the composition of it should be very easy to, to flip through and, um, you know, and, and, and everything has to be outstanding work. And if you're ever working or interviewing with an agency, creative directors of, you know, of agencies, I mean, they do not want to see anything but stellar work. Like I said, so don't just fill it up. You, you have to put um, great work in your book. Also, I thought it'd be, you know, an interesting statistic. I don't know if I sent this to you or not, Diane, but almost 70% of executives that the creative group interviewed said that, that they value the overall creativity of a designer. They value that most when they're evaluating, um, you know, a portfolio. So, so just your overall creativity. And what you said this earlier, Diane, you said you don't you want to be a trendsetter, not a follower. So I think when you're putting, you know, your work in, your samples in, show that you're a trendsetter. I think those are the type of things that um, that are really going to make your book and your portfolio stand out. How they're organized the order in which, you know, your samples are there, as well as just those beautiful pieces that show you're a trendsetter. Definitely. And I think there's also some facts yeah, with these that. Are some um, with trendsetting, I think um, you, you may have a ton of people following you, like on Instagram or something. Do you think that that's something you should mention? Say you're doing stuff and you're... Um, you're doing hand type, you're doing a ton of hand type and, and you have a ton of people following you on Instagram, say, would that be something that you 
you could show some of that work and then also say something about that so that people would know if, if they didn't realize that you were that? Or should you just kind of leave that in the cover letter or something? Or uh, Oh, these days I think it could have a you know, big impact on a, on a hiring manager. If, you're, um, if you do have a lot of followers, you influence the design community, you're a mentor. Um, I, I think it's an important stat how many followers you have and how you are um, linked and, and networked socially is you know, it, it is part of your brand and, you know, being social is a skill that that employers are looking for today. You don't have to be, uh, you know, an expert in social media, but knowing how to use these tools uh, and, and, you know, is an important skill that that companies are looking for. So, yeah, if you if you have followers and uh, you're an influencer on certain sites, I definitely would highlight that. Um, on my resume for sure, and definitely during a discussion in the interview. Cool. Um, I know we're about out of time, so we have nine minutes, but I know the, you know lots of times people say, oh, well, do you have something you can leave with us? Or um, what about like a leave behind piece? And I know um, we had talked about it last time when uh, Greg was with us from the creative group. He said, you know, a thank you card. When you're done, send a thank you card. And that's a leave behind. I mean, that's something you're going to send them later. But a leave behind piece is usually a little different. It's sometimes they're a little, you know, it's a little portfolio book and it has a couple, maybe it's a story and it's about you and it's something illustrative or maybe it has a couple pictures of some pieces that was in your portfolio or it can be all kinds of things. But what do you think about that and, and what do you think people should do? Oh, I think it makes a, a big difference if you have a leave behind. Personally, I take a lot of samples with me as I attend portfolio reviews and during interviews, and I do look at them, get inspired by them. I share them with other people, um, other designers. I think it's it's important about making that impression, selling your work, your brand long after you've left. Um, it, it helps keep your name and your work. Um, you know, top of mind when you have a leave behind like that. Uh, it could be as simple as, you know, as a beautiful business card that has your, you know, your brand on it that that speaks to, to you, your colors, your logo, um, you know, or it could be elaborate. It could, uh, you know, a set of coasters. Um, I've had someone package, uh, you know, a flash uh, a flash drive. They they built, they designed the flash drive, the packaging of the flash drive, and on that flash drive was was their work. Um, you know, I I I think it's important that you leave a leave behind. Very very important. And then what Greg said on the last precast that you did with us was um, maybe that follow up. I think I think a follow up to your interview to your portfolio review is so important um you know it's a lost art that handwritten thank you uh note i i love it when i um, receive a handwritten thank you note but you follow up with an email uh, a thank you email you know after that you send a handwritten thank you note and maybe if you didn't leave a leave behind uh this is another opportunity to get your brand in front of this hiring manager um, you know, because after all, I mean, we are we are trying to brand ourselves, right? You are trying to brand you, and hiring managers are evaluating how you manage a brand. So, leaving this impression and getting yourself and your your work in front of a hiring manager is at, as at as many touch points as you can shows that you're a good brand manager too. So it is important. I love the leave behinds. And like I said, it could be it could be simple or elaborate.
Diane, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, this piece I said was really good. This was the inside of the piece. Um, the outside of the piece was, um, you know, really beautiful. It would be a good follow-up piece as well. And I think it's really important in the um, portfolio review to get someone's business card, not only an interview, hopefully you have their business card, but you get it and because they're doing it usually as a service to you. So how nice to get something handwritten from the, you know, from a, it would be another, they see maybe, you know, 50 people, 20 people a day. It's, they not, might not remember you. So then if you send something that has a memory that would connect them to something that they saw, that might help. So sorry, I keep messing with the sound because I'm coughing and I don't want to cough on live, I guess. Sorry. Um, so we are, we have four more minutes. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I did want to, um, what about if I was bringing, I don't have, say I don't have an iPad and all I have is this, my phone, to show um, something that I did. Um, is that okay? You know, is that something that's going to be, say I'm showing responsive website design, you know, is that good to show them that you can do it and all you have it is on a phone, but at least they can see? Or how would you, would you, is that something you should save up for and get like the mini iPad or would you suggest a regular iPad, you know, size wise, if you're going to save up for something, what, what do you suggest? Well, I mean, that's up to you. Um, you know, a, a laptop and an iPad, I think, are are the best, but it really depends on, uh, you know, who you're presenting to and what they like. Uh, if you're showing how you understand responsive design and, uh, at, you know, the, the hiring company is an iPhone, you know, user and wants you to, to work on mobile apps, I totally would bring up my... <laughs> You know my mobile app on an iPhone. I think that would be absolutely acceptable if it's acceptable to them. If they expect you to present on a laptop or an iPad, maybe you borrow one. You know, maybe you just borrow one for the day. There's nothing wrong with that. Just understand how you know practice how your presentation. Um, but you know, technology is it's it's important. I mean, I. I Oh no, she went off. Um, hang on, let's see. I lost her. Um, technology is super important, and whenever she comes back on, I'm going to pop up. They do have an awesome portfolio guide, and I'm going to put that on screen right now. And whenever she comes back, hopefully, she is. She's super awesome, Cindy. I totally agree. Um, so I have it in both places. Uh, you can also follow the creative group at, at creative group on Twitter, and hopefully she'll come back. Um, and then they're also on Instagram. And there that is. And they're also on Facebook. And there they are. Um, and then you can follow me at Design Recharge, um, at Design Recharge on Twitter, or at Diane Gibbs AU which those are right here. Um, I'm on Instagram, and Design Recharge is also on Facebook. You can also sign up for our email newsletter. There is stuff that you don't get if you're not on the email newsletter. Every week, um, you get special stuff that nobody else gets. So and, um, hopefully, uh, you can get sign up. You can sign up through Facebook, or you can also sign up through our website, designrecharge.org. And remember, next week I am taking the week off, so I um, I'm not lazy. I just needed a little uh, R and R, so I'm taking next week off. We will be back the following Wednesday with Mike Rohde, and you don't want to miss it. Um, he is a sketch noter. And it's about making, taking notes, um, sketching, um, how you 
collect information. It'll be awesome with um, if you're in class or you're with a client, you can take notes, or you're at a conference and you want to take notes. So make sure you sign up for the email newsletter, and it's at the top on the right-hand side. And um, if you want to get in touch with me, Diane at the designrecharge.org. I actually will email you back. Um, a lot of people, I know Andre, I think we're friends on Facebook. Um, Allison, I don't know where Donna went, so hopefully, um, oh, there she's back. Hopefully, um, I know we had a couple other questions, one question I know for sure, but I want to put this up. This is their website, so I've given you all their other um, connections, and whenever her thing turns from no camera to waiting, I will pull her back on. I know we're about out, but this is their website. So again, they have all kinds of stuff. Oh, and she went away again. Lovely. Um, so Lisa, you asked, what if you have um, a really strong portfolio, but not a lot of advertising, graphic, or web to show for, but you have the experience? How do you translate that to a potential employer? Well, um, you have really strong, I would say, I would put some of those really strong illustrations into an ad that they so they could see how your ad could work for somebody. It could be brushing teeth or it could be whatever you think that illustration could sell. I would put that in something so that it because a lot of people need not necessarily a creative director, they don't need the help figuring out where that's going to go, but the other people might need help to see where how you we could use your um it could be in a in a editorial column. You could put it into if you're not a um, great designer, you could team up with a designer, and they might could design an article with your illustrations. And there's Donna, hopefully back. Hopefully she'll be able to answer this one. Um, but I think that is really important for. <coughs> sorry, to see why I've been muting. Um, I think that's really important, and hopefully Lisa that answers your question, but hopefully Donna will be able to answer the question. Donna, you can see this, I know, and you can answer over there if you want, but I will try to pull you on camera as soon as I can see you, but I can't see you yet, so um, I am hoping. But okay, good, Lisa, at least I helped a little. Um, I was going to try to say goodbye to Donna, so um, Donna, I know Allison's here. Allison's also with the creative group down by Andre. Oh, there she is. Here she is. One last bit. Donna, are you there? Yeah, I hear down. you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry I about that. that well, I, no problem. Well, Lisa had a question, and I kind of answered it, and I shared all of your links and the portfolio um the the portfolio guide as well. So if you want to say anything about that, but Lisa had this question about I don't know if you were reading it or not. So what if you have a really so strong illustration? Find... Yeah. I see when applying for an internship is Behance acceptable. That's what I see. So do you have another question there? Because I think we oh. answered that one. Yeah, let me um, let me uh, read it to you. What if you have a really strong illustration portfolio, but not a lot of advertising, graphic, or web to show for, but you have the experience? How do you translate that to potential employers? Oh yeah, sorry, it's yeah. Well, you definitely want to highlight your work confidently. I mean, you're an illustrator, confidently present your illustration work. I mean, you remember, it's how you present your, your work and your experience um, that they're looking at as well, Lisa, right? But if, you know, if you're ready to make a transition into another, um, you know, another area of study, uh, you know, maybe maybe what you do is you know work on some advertising uh, material and include that in your portfolio. Um, I think what's important is that you know you you include your best work that you can. You present it confidently. Um, you talk about your experience uh, in a way that shows your thinking, your 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 process for for thinking and solving problems and uh, your desire to to get into a different you know field 
So if you want to get some advertising work um, and, and you don't have that, um, those samples, you, you really need to start, you know, start looking for places maybe where, where you can get that, that experience, but in the meantime, show the experience that you do have and how that translates to the job that you want to get. Cool. And I'm going to pull this one on. This is Courtney. So she was just saying, do you think uh, for an internship or any job, I guess, um, the Behance portfolio, or should it also be, should they, sh should she also make a PDF to send? What would you suggest? Or just the Behance? Yeah, I would ask them. If you have the opportunity to ask them what they would prefer, I would do that. Some companies, you know, maybe they don't want the PDF. Maybe they just want the link to a site. Um, maybe they don't want the link to the site. Maybe they want to see a PDF. So ask them what they prefer. Either is fine. Um, but, you know, and if you if you want to send both and let them choose, that's fine too. Uh, but it, it is a good point that I'd, I'd like to make. Don't to, um, hesitate to call or send an email to the interview and ask them how they would like to see your work, in what format, um, how many people will be reviewing your work, how many samples ideally do they want to see, um, you know, so, and, and would they like a link to a, a digital portfolio site or some PDFs or both. So don't hesitate at all to ask them what they'd like instead of guessing. Okay, two Two more questions, and then we're, I'm going to let you go. You're awesome for putting up with us, and I'm so glad you got to come back on. So this is from Heather. What's the best way of putting your portfolio together after working for a company that won't let you display your work online? Okay, and would not, um, and would not let you take high-res files for your print portfolio. The CEO's concern is copyright issues. What would you suggest? Yeah, that's tough because if you don't have, if you're not authorized to show the work, uh, you have to, you have to, you know, be careful about that. You cannot publish work that you don't have the right to publish, right? So I would make some phone calls. If you are, um, you know, not working for that company anymore, I would definitely make some phone calls and get some permission to show some samples. Tell them why it will, you know, adjust to, to, to in your job search um, that, that you need some samples. You will not be publishing those. And, um, you know, maybe you can get permission. But I was, would make as many phone calls or even in-person meetings to get those approvals, make as many of those uh, appointments as I can. Um, because you do have to be careful with, with laws not to publish work that you don't have the right to publish. I know when we're interviewing uh, freelancers, we ask all of our candidates and employees uh, to only publish work on our portfolio site that they have authorization to publish. So it is a really good question. Um, you know, in, and, and then you know, you have to make sure you show your design work um, that you've done outside of that company's um, walls that they don't have copyright to. Definitely. And usually in freelance stuff, you can put it in your contract. Um, and then if they have a problem with that, that you're not going to be able to use that, you can actually charge a little bit more because it, in or you don't have to, but it's something that you need to know. Like I have it in my contract. We'll be able to use this on my website as well as on my in my portfolio. Um, and it, some people don't. And then then it could be um, you know it might cost them a little bit more because then this is extra time. This is another piece that you won't be able to do. Or you could say, hey, I won't put it on the website, but can I put it in? You know, it's something that you can work out with them. But I definitely think it's um, hopefully uh, worth it. So Heather, hopefully. Uh, we lost her again. Boogers. Uh, okay, Chris, I'm going to pull your question on. <clears throat> Hopefully she'll come back. Allison, can you help her, please? Um, let's see. How does photography relate to creative jobs, and is that skill as important as design skills? So, um, well, you guys can help me answer this one. Um, 
I think it's incredibly important. It will be um, very beneficial. As a designer, a lot of times you have to work with photographers. And if you know more about shooting or what type of light, um, you know, all the things that you know because you are a photographer, um, it is really helpful. Um, you might not be out there shooting. Sometimes you might. Sometimes if with a smaller company, you have to kind of do some of that on your own. So Allison says, and she's from the creative group too, she works with Donna. If you have any further questions, feel free to send it to allison.how, H-A-U, at creativegroup.com. And that's Allison 1L, and it's right there. You can actually click it, and she'll pass it on to Donna to answer. Thank you. Or you can do it, uh, Donna. Um, there, her thing is right there. I'm going to put that on screen. Um, is that skill as important as design skills? You know, I don't think everybody has to be an illustrator, and I don't think everybody has to be a photographer. I think it's very beneficial to have at least one other. It doesn't mean that you're going to be, like, winning awards with your photography skills, but I do think it can be very beneficial. Um, maybe she's coming back on. And she can answer this last one. And I'm sorry we're really over today, but um, I really think it's been super helpful. And we won't be here next week, so no, she's gone. So I'm going to close it off. Chris, I'm so sorry. Try to get with her on Twitter, or you can email Allison. And um, I'm getting lots. Oh, no, <laughs> that's okay, Allison. Thank you. Um, and Heather, I'm glad it was, I was working with, yeah, i I'm, that really sucks, Heather. Sorry. It's just something, a lot of live and learn. So um, thank you guys. I hope you come back in two weeks for Mike Rohde and sketch noting. You could do a little um, research on him before if you want. He's amazing. So I'll see you in two weeks after, I think it's the second week of May, uh, April. I don't have my calendar in front of me. I'm sorry. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks so much, Donna.